Hey everybody, welcome back to Prey. Um, this series is being played blind, but you know it can't be a Minsk and Friends blind let's play without me having to redo a couple of episodes that's not being blind. So wel welcome to that, the redo that's not blind because I screwed up with the last couple of episodes. I get, this, I get the weird feeling I should be taking cover. I don't know. Hey! Aha! Not this time, silly. I wrapped my external hard drive in some bubble wrap. Which, as we all know, is the perfect defense against these sorts of plasma shockwaves. Oh, goodness, this is not going to be a fun mission, this next one. Yep, that body over there, we need to get to it. It just so happens to be inside the magnetosphere chamber. Which I'm not sure if that's the correct terminology for the device itself. Like a magnetosphere, like atmosphere, is like a field around an object. In this case, it's the magnetic field, basically. I, I, ooh, this is stoids. No, you don't. Ow, I'm getting smoked. Okay, wasn't the most graceful way of dealing with these cystoids, but um, I'll take it. Plug you up. That looks good. Okay, it's going down, so... Let's do this. We can do this. Don't worry. Oh, hello, science operator. How's you doing? Sorry, I can't talk right now. I'm stuck inside zero gravity. That's about to explode and fry me. Like a hot potato. Oh crap! Accelerate! Accelerate! Oh god! Seek shelter. Plasma shockwave in five, four, three, two, uh. one. Okay. I think I survived that adventure. Uh oh. You guys don't look friendly. I have to, like, I have to admit, I already did that once, because, you know, I, I tried to record this earlier blind. That is still so unpleasant going inside that thing that I was not a fan. Where's my EMPs? Hi there. Ah, didn't get catch caught by my EMP. I'll finish you off all the same. How about the other one? Oh no, I... No. Doi. I was trying to use the explosive bottle on the thing, Natch, but of course it flew too close to me. Hmm. How far back am I? Am I after I escaped the plasma chamber? Oh, this is a very bad time for an autosave. Come on! That is legitimately creepy to me to be inside that chamber there where it's about to pop. It's... Ah, uh, cool. Hey! Ow. Hey, fellas. There we go. Just gotta remember that trick. The future. That was a lot more efficient. Ooh. Ooh, you are fiddly. Okay. I think that's all of them this time. You know, I have to say... We'll probably get to those fights today. There are some really rough fights in this game coming up. Well, a lot of the fights have been rough in this game, and I can't help but shake the feeling I've been having for a while. Also, one feeling, I really wish the suit repair kits were here, because we got the med kits and the psi hypos. It seems a weird omission not to have the suit repair kit there as well, especially since it's one of those three bars there, which those the other two aforementioned items fix up. Oh, well. In any case, um, like, yeah, I find the fights in this game really tough. It could just be my own poor showing, but I'm not convinced entirely. I do feel... Okay, that's it. Magnetosphere was a fun room. Goodbye, everybody. Ooh, water cooler. Yum. Okay, bye. But here's also this. I still have have no idea how you're supposed to get in here. Ow. So I 
I, I'm just more and more convinced that the game is just meant to be played extremely stealth-wise. Even though that's not my natural predilection when fighting a bunch of weird goop aliens, especially when you can hardly tell uh, which way the guys are facing with their, their faceless forms. I really wish I could get in there. All that cool stuff laying there. Um, and I feel like um, this genre is called immersive sim. And it's really funny since now that I've been reading about the genre and it's Unfortunate imminent demise, apparently. Um, that is an unpleasant noise. Um, I, I'm, like, shocked that I've never heard the term before, even though I've been, like, trying to think, like, what would be the genre name for these Deus Ex-type games? Because they're not really first-person shooters. They're not quite RPGs either, I don't feel. But they have a lot of elements of everything. A little bit of everything in a weirdly working fashion. But yes, the term used online is immersive sim. They they kind of talk about how it's like, play how you want. Like, even this game had that prompt come up, like, you should play how you want. But I've always felt that, at least in arcane uh, software's games, or whatever, arcane, whatever they're called, who make Dishonored and Prey, I've always felt like the combat is incredibly clunky. Ooh, this is shiny. Oh! Well. Flashback goop. Great. Someone's gooped flashback all over the corridor. Who did this? Anyway, um, I, I've always felt like stealth is the preferred way of playing these games in the first place. And even in Deus Ex... All Deus Exes, even the first one way back, I felt like stealth was way more efficient than trying to fight people. You died super fast in that, I felt. Huh. Beautiful. But we're not sure what its purpose is. It's never spread outside the containment cylinder. Until now. Yeah, you should probably call maintenance on that. Oh wait, everybody's dead. So never mind. Um, yeah, I guess it causes flashbacks is the ability. I'm fine in it right now. It seems harmless enough when I'm floating in it now, so... Mm -hmm. Oh, Arboratum's that way. We are... Look at this cool... Like, I assume this is like the... Some sort of elevator shaft or something. I don't know, because this is so... Expansive, like it goes the whole length of the station. So really, I should have realized coming into prey that I should play this game a bit more stealthily to really kind of play to my strengths. Really, that's how I've done other immersive sims. I, 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 I guess I don't know, cause I've also seen people. Oh my god, that's a weaver. I've also seen people play, like, incredible combat moves in in Dishonored, like, incredible combat tricks. He spotted me. That's not good. Ah, that's not good at all. Let's try to get a bit closer. Oh, I see my problem. I've... The pistol was again in slot 4 instead of slot 2. I'm just too used to the pistol being in slot 2 to have it anywhere else. And get buffed, Weaver. Wait, that didn't do any damage to him. Another cystoids. Oh boy. Let's try to chase this thing down. I mean, it's on the way to the Arboretum, so why not? Did I even catch him? Well, he takes. Oh! He takes a lot of damage from just pistol shots. Oh, hold on, someone's on the phone. Ah! Okay. They're crawling all over the station. Check everything around you. Hit it with a wrench. Check the wrench first. Sam? He's right. These things. Smash every freestanding thing and beat it to the you. Get to a secure area, and when you're safe, call 
call me via transcribe. I'm sending you a secure contact. All right? Understood. I kind of missed the discussion there. I stopped for a second to let you guys hear, but apparently there's... Transcribe in the coolant monitoring station. <laughs> Head in there now. I can lock myself in. Are you okay? I'm just catching my breath. Sarah, can you tell me what happened? Micah, get safe, then call. Okay, good talk. Okay, so they're in trouble in the engine room, I think, was where the trouble was. Seems these uh, these things are everywhere. There's a couple of survivors still left here. We heard a call previously from, I think it was Elazar who called, but um, at least some confirmation. There's someone still alive on this ship, thankfully. And Alex has been calling us all this time, but who, who cares about that guy? Look at this, Siskak eels. I don't know why there's a collection of weird bioluminescent eels but there we go also i don't think i don't think electric eels in real life freaking glow like that from the inside that i'm, I'm not convinced that's how electric eels work but i will defer to the game for now i mean these aren't really electric eels they're siskak eels whatever that may be ow i smacked into the wall bear with me zero g is a bit tricky to Traverse. I should really go loot that weaver, shouldn't I? He probably left some cool items. Let's see if I can speed up. Uh oh. I should probably decelerate, actually. Oh, that's right. I'm using the Artax system to boost myself further. That's cool. Assistoid ah, nests. Oh, also, I should have done this, shouldn't I? I should have scanned the weaver while I had the chance. They probably have some tech I could still use. Wait a second. Is that a weaver alive over there? Did I not kill that guy? Did that guy escape? I thought I finished him off. Assistoids. Ah, these cystoids. Okay, buddy. You're not going anywhere. Yeah, it is the weaver I tried to kill previously. There we go. What do we get from you, buddy? Got backlash too. Okay, cool. Uh, new level of backlash, I guess. Oh! What the? How is this guy so tough to put down? I mean, he was... He was taking so much damage previously, and now these freaking cystoids. Ugh. Okay, well, we finally beat the Weaver. Look at all that Typhon stuff we got. But I ate up a lot of ammo, which may have not been smart, unfortunately. Oof. Where the heck am I going now? I'm going all the wrong way. This is the way I want to go. I'm all tossed and turned around. Uh, uh, oh, oof. Okay, now we're done in this place. Case in point, that was quite the crapshoot, that fight, wasn't it? Uh, I'm open to admit it was due to my poor playing. Oops, no, I meant to... Okay, that's one Psy Hypo. I was going to use the Psy Hypo anyway. It could be just due to my poor play, uh, gameplay there, but I also feel like the combat in this game is a bit janky. And it's been always in this game, so I, even though they say, like, play all you want, I really personally feel like stealth is how they always intend you to play these in these games. I mean, really, the, the best thing I could have gotten out of that Weaver was that da data there, just scanning it. So I would have really needed to kill it for the 15 parts. That's nice and all, but... Oh well, I'll try to play smart with the ammo in this next area. As we get into the Arboretum. Oh, bleh. It's awfully nice of these weird... Gravity transition things to orient you the right way around. Also, I totally need to remember to do this. Remember, we've got that chip that we can scan for monsters, mimics. We also got a chip from... I forgot all about it during that crazy 
escape, but we got a chip from... What? No. Got that. We got a chip while we were... Didn't we get a chip while we were inside? I don't know. I thought we got a chip when 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 we um <clears throat> when we were um, running away from the psycho psycho magnetotron magnetosphere. Damn it! Oh, what well, is wrong with my lexicon? A Typhon lure, aka Nightlight, emits a psycho luminescent signal and entices Typhon to move toward the lure for a short period of time. Combined with other t weapons or tactics to escape, ambush, or observe Typhon from a safe distance. That's cool. It's like a... It's like throwing a bolt to gain the attention of enemies. Helica James. Ugh. That's, that's really cool that every single dead body in this game has a name attached to them. It's, that in its small way is kind of really humanizing. I think it's neat. Okay. In this edition of Transstar Life's Rising Star segment, we profile Harley Granger, a member of the Neuromod sales team who is currently stationed aboard Talos 1. Some of you might recognize Harley's name from his professional baseball days, when he played second base in war number 66 for the Tornadoes. Harley was assigned to Talos 1 two years ago and has made the journey into orbit and back over 50 times. Not bad for someone who's afraid of flying. Uh, my time playing baseball forced me to deal with that fear, he said. Believe it or not, a shuttle trip to Talos 1 is far easier than a cross-country airliner trip. I mean, if he says so. Oh, there's all beer. Someone was hanging out here reading about Harley and drinking beer. Why don't we have a beer after our epic adventure through the guts? Ugh. Why is this so finicky at times? Hang on, are these... Oh, I've got two weapon upgrade kits all this time. All right, then. Let's, uh... Let's, uh, do that. Uh, upgrade the pistol for... Let's get some range. I really like the pistol in this game. It seems really strong. And why don't we do the glue gun for range as well? Perfect. Oh, we could also look at Neuromod really quickly. Um, where is... Oh, that costs four. Because the other upgrades for the weapons require this gunsmith skill. And I do seem to be favoring them. Certainly over over these these these... Typhon abilities. Oh, I need more research before I can get this. I'm not, I'm not sure if I want Mimic Matter. It sounds very strange. Oh, wow, oh, this control's really crazy now that I had the beer. Whoopsie! Okay, to the Arboretum! Yes, I'm sure. So, while we're on the topic of uh, immersive sims, that's been kind of the word lately that they're on the chopping block. In fact, in general, the word is that, well, some people are crying that single player is dead. I don't subscribe to that because that was something that I remember being cried already at the beginning of the millennium when... Um, people's internet speed got a lot better and multiplayer games became more popular on PC. Counter-Strike and then a little later World of Warcraft. I think a lot of people were saying that single player would be dead that day as well. Oh! You made it. Nice work. The entrance to deep storage is off the Arboretum. Your brother's office is up here as well. Jupiter in his palace at the top of the heavens. You used to say that behind his back. But that would make you... what? you know? Mm, no. That's an unpleasant thought. Ew. Yeah. No, that's not good. No. I mean, it's par for the course in in Greek and Roman mythology, certainly, but ugh, no. Stole that thought. Oh, look, we get a second one of these. Uh, the... Really now? You cheeky little 
Ooh, I think I'm still a bit tipsy from that beer. Why is it that video game people never can hold their alcohol? They immediately turn into a goofy. This is cool. If we hadn't found that secret stun gun early in the game, we'd have gotten one here. Oh, let's listen to this and I'll this talk about my thought about games. Oh, we get a side quest from that. Alrighty then. And now we can clear up our uh, inventory a little bit from clutter. Okay. Mineral material, good. We need that. I there is a fight coming up, and I am gonna need bullets. I've played that far in this game. There is a side quest which has a mandatory fight. And a really tough one too, so. Now we could get a suit repair kit. We are kind of low on those. I think I do. I have, did I get one of those? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I definitely want to get these bullets though. We'll, we'll find some new row mods eventually. So, thank you. Okay, and there we go. Some more bullets. How are we? We got back up to almost 100. Good. They go fast. I'm, I'm rather crazy with those. You get a suit repair kit as well. Let's create a pile of those. I seem to still have radiation damage on me. How do you check your statuses? Oh, maybe from here. Use anti-rads to visit the medical operator. Ah, all right then. Well, I mean, I can at least fix up the suit, so I'll do that. Ta-da! And I'll make a couple more for good measure. Um, yeah, so I'm not convinced that single-player games are going away, especially because we all realize how incredible some of the single-player games in 2017 were. Nintendo alone has been knocking out of the ballpark. However, um, a lot of... A lot of the more linear games have been failing the, in the world, um, on the AAA front anyway. Um, like, uh, uh, for example, this very game we're playing now, Prey, did not make a big splash when it came out, unfortunately. And every it, it's so sad looking at Bethesda's publishing work, because uh, Bethesda's been raked over the coals for their own development. And, um, I like their work. I have certainly admitted to that, but I, 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 well, okay, even I will say that Fallout 4 does not feel as good as Fallout 3, let alone how incredible Fall Fallout New Vegas apparently is. Like, Fallout 4, um, it has, is a bit of a chore at times to play. But Bethesda's publishing work has been incredible, like, uh, uh, the everything Arcane makes, Evil Within Two, Wolfenstein Doom, like they're all been just critical darlings. These games that these guys have made, but they've all, almost all of them have sold like crap. Oh. Morgan, are you all right? That Typhon, there's nothing in the research. Stay away from it. That, that was a big boy. Whatever that was. Unfortunately, we can't open this door because it's unpowered. Fortunately, fortunately, here's a vent. Always go for the vents when you're trying to crawl around. Yeah. Okay. So thanks for the stuff, Mark. While you're up there, you could look into why the lift is stuck. It'd be a lot faster and safer than having to fly through the guts again. Okay, now we get another side quest. We need to fix the lift. We can finally do it here in the Arboretum. So yeah, it definitely looks like the, the games which... The games which... Uh, that aren't straight up multiplayer games. The games that are successful tend to be open world leaning. Breath of the Wild and... Uh, Assassin's Creed and all these games. Uh, and linear experiences unfortunately are starting to look very unviable. In fact, just recently I read uh, EA's 
report to their um, investors why that visceral game Star Wars game was cancelled and they basically said well modern gamers today are not as into linear experiences <sighs> look at this place no wonder he has his office here this <laughs> this place looks incredible I mean uh, you knew from the name Arboretum it would have something to do with plants, but this is quite the quite the garden we have here. And they've like built it to look like natural and stuff too with all these rocks here. It's groovy. And that makes me super sad going back to that. Because that, I've talked lots of times on this channel about how I enjoy a lot of linear games and um, I... I, I'm not as into open world games or well a lot of recent open world games I've found lacking like there's still great games in the genre and games that I like and even good ones like you know I, I can I can see the ben the merits of a game like Far Cry 4 I thought that was pretty hype that game but um, let's see entry 165 I've managed to reduce the growth time to around 10 minutes per fruit it's remarkable to see them sprout from practically nothing and grow to an edible size and ripeness before my very eyes. More importantly, I finally obtained clearance for wider range testing of the growth formula from Dr. Kelstrop. All that's left is actually fabricating it, and then inserting it in the sprinkler system. I'm keeping the fabrication plan on my person, as I have no doubt others would love to claim credit for it. So there is a weird side quest that I have not completed, even when I first go recording. Um... So Dr. Howard has invented some sort of growth formula which, which makes fruit grow super fast and for whatever reason we we want to finish his work. So we need to find his body. Which kind of a cool moment that's not actually marked with a marker here. So you can basically try to do this quest by uh, tracking down the corpse yourself by exploring or you know trying to find one of those security stations and using it to track him down. This isn't working. Let's see if I can't hack this. Do I remember this hacking mini game? How did it work now? All right, control this. I want to get to that part there. And D. Easy peasy. What do we find in the garden shed? Oh, that's rude. You were a perfectly nice med kit, and now I had to smash you. Or did I get a med kit from that? I, I missed which item. Cafe Karsk. It doesn't sound alcoholic, but I'll just miss it for now. Another note. Julian, stopped by, but you were out. FYI, I reviewed your lab notes. Plants pose no health risk. You should be GTG in Arboretum, Hans. Now, a lot of... Because I've seen... A, I'm not the only one who feels the, you know, sad about the fact that the big publishers are clearly moving away from... A really tight like focused linear experience i think that's the big benefits of a linear game and when you say linear game there's still degrees in there like between open world and a complete pipe shoot travel thing like um like the metro games are fairly linear with the exception of some open areas we'll see what happens when metro exodus comes back next year what may well be one of the last of its kind of those games but then there's like, well, I mean, man, I had a list of games that I thought were good examples. Like, well, Dishonored. I mean, the Dishonored games, I wouldn't call them open world, definitely. You have to go the chapters in order and stuff, but they're very, the levels are still very open. You Certainly, the chapters you do, you are, it's very open to figure out your order that you approach them, you know, the way you traverse the maps. But they're still not really open world. I just can't really call them that. And, um, and there's... What other game was I thinking of that I really like, which is not entirely linear? I mean, I guess Doom. Doom... They're not definitely open world. You can't just go traveling on Mars wherever you want to. Those are straight up levels. Speaking of the recent Doom. By the way, what did I just hear? Wait a second. I hear a. I thought I. I swear. Your voice is so Who are you? 
Whoa, I, I did not explore this building when I was here, my first playthrough. There's a, now, is that a human or is that one of those Typhon repeating voices? How do I get into the greenhouse? This is mysterious now. We've had so few run-ins with humans. It's really fascinating, the game, in that sense. 